Life is a wonderful thing. So complex, so fragile, and yet so beautiful. The fact that humans have come all this way from using the stars as guiding forces of everyday life to understanding the fundamental building blocks of our existence, our DNA. In 2003, the Human Genome Project achieved an accurate and complete human genome sequence of roughly 30,000 genes. This opened a whole new world of discoveries and will change our human lives forever, from gene editing, gene therapy, and best of all, early disease prevention. Hi everyone, my name is Michael, and in this video I will talk about ArcG, which is trying to capitalize on the next $9 trillion opportunity. We will touch up on the current three top holdings for ArcG, and in the end I will give you guys my personal opinion regarding these companies on their own. I do want to begin by saying that this is not financial advice. This video was put together for illustration purposes and to help you guys learn a little bit about ArcG and the companies behind it, and hopefully it can give you guys a little bit of a rough idea to help spark a little bit of inspiration so that you guys can continue doing your research and finding out if ArcG or any of these companies are a great fit for you as an investor. If this is your first time in this channel and you like the format of the video, consider subscribing to Electric Invest and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next video. And without further ado, let's begin. Cathy Wood is known for her success in finding companies that focus primarily on disruptive innovation. She believes that the next big investment opportunity will come from the genomic sector, which is the study of the entirety of an organism's genes, analyzing enormous amounts of DNA sequence data to find variations that affect health, disease, or drug response. Tesla's still in the running, but I would have to say the biggest upside surprises are going to come from the genomic space. Uh, and that's because the convergence of DNA sequencing, uh, artificial intelligence, and gene therapies, importantly, CRISPR gene editing, are going to uh, cure disease. That convergence is going to cure disease. Now we have real science and technology surfacing the mutations in our genomic profile and um, and uh, as they surface those mutations, what do we see? We see the earliest manifestations of disease. And now with the combination of artificial intelligence and gene editing, we're able to both anticipate diseases and cure them potentially. Beta thalassemia, we're seeing it, sickle cell disease. We even think it will work in uh, diabetes. As a result, Kathy founded the ArcG which is an actively managed ETF that seeks long-term growth by capitalizing and investing in the genomics revolution with the coverage of AI, DNA sequencing, and gene editing. In 2020 alone, ArcG was up nearly 169% compared to the 16% of the S&P 500 in the same time period. And just for illustration purposes, take a look into this chart that shows you a hypothetical scenario of investing $10,000 into ArcG versus other competitors. The great thing about ArcG is that it offers the exposure of innovation and the ability to capture long-term growth compared to traditional strategies. You also get diversification grounded in research while also being cost-effective. Now that we have seen the benefits of investing in ArcG, let's take a look at the most significant holdings and how they're making an impact with their disruptive innovation. ArcG's largest holding at 6.8% is the Pacific Bioscience of California, ticket symbol PACB. Currently trades at $37.42 as of the time of this recording. So what Pacific Biosenses basically does is they manufactured and developed the most advanced gene sequencing systems, helping scientists obtain highly accurate readings of long sequences of DNA at an affordable price due to its high quality data from each single cycle of reading. The technology is called Molecular Time Sequencing, or SMRT for short. The interesting thing about this process is that when the primer and polymerase, which is responsible for the process of DNA replication, gets attached to a loop of DNA using adapters creating a circular template, a single light beam is then used to scan the connection to read the letters of the sequence. And just for a quick review, DNA consists of a double helix structure with four nuclear bases identified by four letters, the letter A for adenine, C for cytosine, G for guanine, and T for thymine. 
Now using this beam of light, the Pacific Biosciences can identify each of these letters attached to the DNA structure in real time, essentially getting an extremely highly accurate reading of long and both short sequences of this DNA. This gives them the ability to identify each gene accurately as well. When you have this level of accuracy, you gain the ability to add or remove without affecting the rest of the sequence. You can think of it of like finally being able to read a book from a foreign language and being able to make corrections on the book because now you finally understand what each word and each sentences actually mean in relation to the entirety of the context of the book. Anybody can read one word or two, but can you really understand whether or not it makes sense to eliminate that word or eliminate that entire sentence? Well, that's exactly what's happening when it comes to these gene readings. You can't simply just remove one letter blindfully. You have to be able to know whether or not it's going to affect the rest of the sequence. And this is where Pacific Biosciences has a leading edge. Not only that, with the genomic sector expected to explode over the next decade, it is no strange that other competitors are emerging. One of the largest competitors to Pacific Bioscience was actually Illumina, which actually used to be part of ArcG Top Holdings, but after focusing on only the short DNA sequencing, rather than the versatile, short and long sequencing that Pacific Biosciences can offer, Cathy Wood actually ended up changing her mind and she ended up selling her entirety of her position within ArcG. But Cathy Wood is very bullish on Pacific Biosciences and she actually believes that they will be able to achieve the majority of the market share. And that to me sounds something extremely good, knowing the extremely good track record that Cathy already has when it comes to her holdings and the companies that she believes long term. The second holding in ArcG at 5.9% is the Teladoc ticket symbol TDOC. Currently trades at a premium of $263. What Teladoc Health essentially provides is a unique approach to medical consulting by taking advantage of today's technologies to provide access to doctors in a fast, reliable and personal way via the internet. Think of it as a way to personally be able to connect with your doctor 24-7 the same way that you may be able to talk to a friend on a Zoom call or through your cell phone. The recent pandemic has accelerated the need for more innovation when it comes to healthcare, and Teladoc's flexibility empowers just that. Furthermore, the consensus estimate for 2021's earnings of 58.1% from the year-ago figure. Also, the revenues reflect improvements of over 80 from the previous year's figure. Another great thing about Teladoc is that members can resolve healthcare needs through an on-demand or scheduled visits with licensed doctors spanning multiple specialties. And as you guys already know, the future is not with the brick and mortar buildings, it is more with the companies that are able to move with the times and are able to offer flexibility over the internet. Matter of fact, I do want to say a personal story that I had with a similar service in which I actually ended up having a little bit of a medical problem and I was not able to have the ability to see a doctor doctor recently and I was able to talk to a doctor and I cannot stress enough how wonderful it was for me to be able to talk to this doctor and be able to tell them exactly what was wrong with me without ever having to worry on whether or not I needed to wait longer times due to the fact that other people were already waiting to be seen. As you guys already know, when it comes to brick and mortar, it's just not going to be working for the future. Ever since we have the ability to go on our cell phones and be able to just snap a picture of a check or be able to have direct deposits, nobody ever wanted to go to a bank physically. So there's a lot of great implications when it comes to Teladonc, a lot of great advantages of being able to just request a doctor anywhere from the country or potentially around the world in the future, in which if there's not a doctor available right now, you don't have to wait. There's a doctor available somewhere else that can talk to you right now because we are in a global connection and you can just use a cell phone. So personally speaking, I'm definitely very happy about finding about this company because I think it's a great investment. And not only that, I would definitely be a customer. So this is just something that I wanted to share with you guys face to face looking at the camera. And now this leads me to the third largest holding and probably one of the most interesting ones because it actually has a successful human trial and that is CRISPR Therapeutics at a holding size of 5.7% under ARC-G. Ticket symbol CRSP 
currently trades at $188.49 as of the time of this recording. Primarily, the science that makes it possible for this company is called the CRISPR-Cas9, and it is the second generation of technologies that seek to repair thousands of inherent genetic diseases and even be able to battle cancer. The great thing about CRISPR is that it has the ability to cut DNA and RNA at a single point, at the same time being able to also insert a new DNA or RNA and make a totally new sequence or even activate or deactivate genes without making permanent changes. CRISPR is also able to track the movement of specific biological molecules and identify the presence of specific cancer mutations and that's not all, it's much much more. So when it comes to the human trials, Veronica Gray is the very first person in the United States to have her sickle cell anemia treated by getting gene editing from CRISPR-Cas9. Now, sickle cell anemia is a genetic mutation that causes red blood cells to be shaped similar to a half moon or a sickle which is used to cut grass, instead of their natural round shape. The sickle-shaped cells are not able to pass through the veins and they end up clotting the blood vessels, slowing or stopping the blood flow, causing severe pain, organ damage, strokes, anemia, and even early death. Because sickle cell anemia is genetically inherited, having the possibility of altering the cause of the genes responsible could be the key to potentially cure such diseases. Furthermore, CRISPR Therapeutics received a brand new grant to advance its CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing therapies for HIV. After a year of treatment, Veronica's clinical trial is going so well that doctors also believe that CRISPR's procedure could eventually revolutionize the treatment for sickle cell disease and much more. I cannot stress enough how important this research is, not just for human biomedical research, but also for plants and animals agriculture, and microinfectious disease prevention. The possibilities are just endless, and this could be one of the most single important breakthroughs in scientific discovery that could change our lives forever. The ability to change, edit, and alter DNA at will without affecting the rest of the sequence. And like I already said, all the information and links to my sources are actually down at the bottom of the description if you guys want to learn a little bit more about Veronica Gray and the research being made from her study. Personally speaking, I do tend to have a higher tolerance for risks than most people tend to do. And that's mostly because I am focused on extremely high growth companies such as Tesla. And ever since I learned about the primary Cathy Woods Arc Innovation Company, you know, Arc K, ever since I learned that they had Tesla at a 10% holding, I actually decided to instead invest in Tesla completely on its own. I also have a tremendously large portion, both in Tesla by itself and also Arc K. And I like to have a little bit of a diversification that way. Now, when it comes to Arc G, I can totally see the benefit and tremendous potential of this ETF. And if you're somebody who's not like me, who doesn't want to necessarily invest in these companies by themselves because again they do depend on the trials and whether or not the technology does well the volatility could definitely be a lot worse than when it comes to tesla's volatility because tesla already became a quote-unquote blue chip and it's already added to the s p 500 so there's a lot of great things that tesla already went through but this company still have a long way to go so i personally think in my opinion not financial advice i definitely encourage you guys to look at the links in the description and also to continue to do your own due diligence but in my personal opinion i do think that it would be a great exposure to these companies i have personally already started investing in crispr and i'm going to also start a position in pacific biosciences and if you're wondering about the older additional holdings in arc g i kept it short because i didn't want to make this video way too long i wanted to keep the video short and sweet and just talk a little bit about arc g why it's a good investment and the top three holdings and what's special about them and i I mean, I gotta say, there's only a few people that you should never bet against, and that is first and foremost Elon Musk, and the second one is Kathy Wood. So I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Let me know your opinions about this video. What do you think about these companies? Would you be considering investing in this company separately or just in Arc G to be able to take advantage of both lower volatility but also have the innovation and exposure as an investor? 
Do you like this type of videos? Let me know if you want me to do a part two in which I go over the other companies or if you want me to cover some other companies that are recommended by Kathy Wood. If I made a mistake in this video, please feel free to let me know gently in the comment section below. English is not my first language and I do sometimes make mix and I do sometimes make mistakes. Uh, this video takes a lot longer than what it seems because I end up butchering the word and I am still trying to improve as a YouTuber in this new sector. If you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to subscribe to Electric Invest and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next video. Make sure to hit me up on Twitter at electric underscore invest. I love you guys and I'll see you guys next time.